Welcome to the shop. We're in the hobby room right off the shop and today we're going to clean my Springfield Armory um, XD40 40 caliber pistol. This is the pistol I carry all the time up in Vermont. It's not my everyday carry. My everyday carry is a Glock 19. In a previous episode I showed you how to clean one of those, disassemble and reassemble. We're going to do the same thing but today it's going to be the XD40. Now I bought this gun from a retired New York police officer. This was his everyday carry. Um, there's some stippling that has been done. He did not do that. I guess he bought this probably um, used as well. But he told me he bought it brand new. But he said he didn't do this. It came like that. So, you know, the uh, Springfield Armory uh, weapons do not come already stippled. So let's we'll break this down, clean it up. I have not fired this weapon, but it's dirty um, because of all the work I do outside and I'm always sweating. You know, this is a used gun. It's um, been scratched up, beat up. And because of my sweat, if you can see, it starts to rust. And because this always sits in the holster and only goes out on the weekends, it starts collecting a lot of dust. Okay, so there's a lot of dust on this weapon, uh, a lot of dirt. So first thing I would do is take it over to the air compressor and blow it all off. Get all that dust and grime and dirt that has built up for probably, I haven't cleaned this in quite a while to be honest with you. Um, but before we do any of that, safety, 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 okay? Um, make sure the magazine has been removed. Make sure you clear the chamber, rack it a couple times, lock it back. Physically inspect the weapon, put your pinky finger in there, make sure there's nothing sitting in the chamber, visually check it, make sure nothing, and you should be able to start breaking this weapon down and cleaning it. But let's go over to the compressor, let's knock it out, let's get all this junk off it. Okay, now we have it all blown off. Actually, this weapon looks clean, <laughs> but uh, it does have the rust on it. I will break it down. I'll wipe it all up and lube it, okay? Um, before we break it down, let's talk cleaning supplies. Um, over the years, I have collected a lot of cleaning supplies. I talked about this on my last video. As you go, you should be picking up cleaning supplies. I now have a tackle box filled with cleaning supplies. I even have cleaning supplies around the uh, room here, okay? Um, some of the basic things that you should definitely have when you go to clean the weapon to make it easier, okay? I would have some type of uh, spray that breaks down the carbon, so break free or something like that. You spray down the weapon, it'll start breaking up the carbon if you went shooting and it's just not holster wear. Um, so spray down all the parts of the weapon, it'll start breaking down the carbon, and then you go to a brush you want to like a stiff bristle bristle um toothbrush you start scrubbing scrub down all that carbon and then you need a nice white t-shirt or something to start removing all the carbon until when you wipe the t-shirt comes out white okay and basically you would want some type of q-tip some good q-tips not ones that the head will fall off in your little nook and cranny you're trying to get into and now you got to try to get the head out of the spring or something you want some decent q-tips um let's take a look inside the box to see what we have so let me see here i have q-tips these q-tips i bought online you got to be careful i bought some q-tips and they snap so easy so read the reviews you could buy a bag of these for like uh, five bucks get some good q-tips you can even buy the actual q-tips in the store they do a good job just be careful 
Um, don't buy cheap ones. Where's my cheap bag? I got a cheap bag of them somewhere. But all I can tell you, if you got a cheap bag, a 99 cents store bag, be very careful with them. You'll be leaving Q-tip parts all over your weapon. Um, get some good Q-tips. Some spray to break down the carbon. Make make your life easier. Um, we're talking about the metal br bristles. Know how to use them. Don't start scratching the hell out of your gun. Be careful using those. Like I said, white t-shirts are key to cleaning. Um, you can buy all different types of cleaning kits. Buy this little cleaning kit that you can wear on your gear. But you know, you know you're talking about probably a fifty dollar. I think this is called Otis, or you know, fifty dollars for this little bag. But everything's in there that you need to clean all different types of uh, calibers. Um, these are always good to have. The cable, instead of using the rod, you put your brushes on the end or your patches. And you run it through the barrel. Um, Got to have your lubrication oil for your weapon. The Hops 9 always makes some good stuff. I always go with them. They even have some uh, Hops 9 like this for some the small little cracks. Most weapons do not need a lot of uh, oil. All you're going to do is um, bring dust and dirt to sit in that oil. So just know where to lube the particular parts that need lube, okay? What metal on metal contact, stuff like that. Just put a drop. You don't need to bury your weapon in lube. I've seen so many people do that, especially new to shooting. Go to the range. I told the story in one of my last videos. Go to the range. Oh, look, try my new weapon. I take it out i go to hit that first round and you get that spray back of just you know their gallon of lube they put in their rifle and it's all over your safety glasses it's all over the place do not drown your weapon in lube okay um yeah they got some this stuff's good too it breaks down the carbon you spray it on um you know all different types of things here you gotta make sure you have the correct um bore brush for your weapon these are some of the best these are military issued type of little brushes to brush off the weapon and those are always good i mean you can start getting into like picks that really if the carbon's built up to pick it off but watch how you scratch the metal some of that metal will scratch very easily um but yeah those are the key components um okay let's break down this weapon now now Make sure the weapon is empty. No magazine in the magazine well. Stick your fingers in there. Make sure there's nothing in the chamber. Stick your finger in there. Visually look at it. From there, lock the slide back, okay? If you don't know how to do that, you shouldn't even be touching your weapon. Um, the breakdown lever is right here. From there, you're going to rotate that up just like that, okay? Now, from there, you're going to pull back, ride the slide home. If you see in the back here, it's it's forward more than usual now okay now the slide won't come off until you pull that trigger okay so that's why it's very important to make sure the weapon is empty nothing's in the chamber there's no magazine 100 percent your weapon is empty at this point okay so at this point you're going to pull the trigger you see the fire pin went and then you should be able to slide it right off just like that okay now, once it's off, you can look inside. It's pretty clean. Um, the only thing's a little dirty is the oil that I put on to protect it. You know, it has drawn some of the dirt towards it and it's sitting on there. Um, so that's it. That's this is field stripping it. So it's all it's all taken down to the point the lower lower half is taken down. This is it. Okay. Now the uh the barrel, the slide, the spring is still together. So you're gonna take the spring, take the pressure off it a little bit, just pull from the back and it comes right out. Put that down on a cleaning mat. You should have some type of mat or some type of a t-shirt laid out so you don't lose your parts. And from there, you're just gonna lift up on the barrel a little bit, slide it out, put that down. And now you should have four what parts. What you do okay. at this point is that's when I take my uh, break free and spray down all the components. Go outside, make sure you're in a ventilated area. Uh, if you're inside and it's ventilated, go ahead and spray it in a five gallon bucket or something. But I would spray everything down. Put your gloves on, let's spray them down.
That's all. I feel it in there. Okay, at this point, everything's been sprayed down. If you did have a lot of carbon in there, it is actually being um, broken down now by the brake free or the cleaner or whatever, whatever you have. Okay. I don't have really anything on here because the weapon has, you know, it's already clean. But it's good to do weapon maintenance on all your weapons. Even if they sit in a safe, you want to pull them out. I know a couple times in places I was living, I would pull my gun out of the safe. It's been sitting there for, I don't know, a year or more. Never shot it, anything. And it would have rust on it. So you want to make sure you uh, clean that up or um, got to watch the moisture levels, things like that in your uh, safe. And they sell things to make sure your weapons stay uh, rust free. I have them all now in socks. They sell these uh, like uh, socks. They have lubrication in them um, and they keep the weapons free of rust. But this weapon, this will probably be rusted within 30 days again because um, I could probably get it Cerakoted, but there's, you know, exposed metal here. And when I sweat, it's going to collect, sit on there because it rides right on my hip there. And the rust is going to come back. Even after I clean it today, the rust will be gone, but the rust will come back. And then that's when the Q-tips come in, getting those little corners. You can see the carbon sitting in there. Yeah, I still got some. Well, you got to be careful of these Q-tips. Q-tips break. Mine just broke. Yeah, there's some carbon. Yeah, let's try this again. The best probably Q-tips that I've learned. These are good because they reach far. Um, and they don't break that easy. Um, some of them snap off so easy. You don't want you don't want those. So read the reviews if you buy them online. But the, I just usually standard Q-tips work the best. They're more flexible. They won't snap. But you got to watch the head, the actual cotton itself. They'll end up getting like stuck in the springs and stuff. See that? That's not good. That's not good. I missed some spots. Barrel. Time to clean the barrel. What you want to do is come over to your box. See if you can find a 40 caliber brush. Usually it says it on the neck. What's this one? 45. So grab your bore brush, run the bore brush down. That will break up all the carbon in there, okay? If you look down it, you'll see it all over the walls and that should be breaking it down. That's when you go ahead and you grab another rod. This is when you grab a patch. You could buy bags of patches. You could buy bags like this or to have a t-shirt and then you cut it to length or thickness. So when it runs down, it's actually pressure on the walls and it's picking up all the loose carbon. Yeah, there's, there's nothing on this because this weapon has not been fired. Okay. Make sure you hit the front. This is where chambers the round. This is the slide where it picks up the round. So you want to make sure you don't have no big lump right there of built up carbon. Could cause jams. This thing will be coming out black. At least you'll go through six patches and you'll start seeing less and less. You clean it, punch it one more time. Um, and then you'll get a nice looking barrel. <laughs> if you look down this barrel, there's nothing. Let me see that. I don't know if you can see that. Okay. All right, I had to change cameras. So back to what I was saying. 
Usually I reassemble the entire weapon, spray it down with some gun cleaner like this, um, and scrub it all and wipe it all down and it looks brand new. Now since there's so much rust on this, I'm going to work on the slide, why, why it's apart, and just scrub and scrub and scrub until the rust comes off. And there's a quite a bit of it on there. I actually ended up um, buying this weapon from my buddy. He was looking to buy a, uh, I forget what he was buying, but uh, he was looking for a 45 or 40. I think he ended up getting a uh, 45. And so when we went to the gun store, he had this weapon with a flashlight holster, four magazines. And they saw the stippling and they were like, well, you know, this is a, some people don't like this stippling and it's probably going to be a tough gun to sell blah 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 so they said oh well we'll give you a hundred and twenty five dollars for the gun my buddy was shocked he was like that's it what well, you know it's it's a good gun and they're like nah only 125 he went back talked to his boss and so my buddy i i think my buddy was going to say yes i was like are you crazy i'll give you 250. so i ended up getting it 250. And like I said, you know, four mags, a holster, um, I think he gave me ammunition, um, it comes with the flashlight, and you can't go wrong, it's subcompact, it was coming from a trusted guy, I know he takes care of his weapons, uh, I know there was no problem with this weapon when I bought it, so... The rust is now off, so it worked. Yeah, you gotta do some scrubbing, but it comes off. Okay, we're gonna reassemble. What I usually do at this point is I put some lube in the upper slide here. Um, this one has a lot of wear on it. You can actually see where you need to put lube because there's metal on metal contact. It's wearing on the frame, so. What I always do, I always put two or three on the slide going up the rail here. If you don't have that, any type of lube will work for, uh, I put about three on each side. Okay, now I usually put one nice. big dot right up there on the top right right here I put a nice big dot and I take my finger and I work it around in that area Just take a look wherever you see somewhere happening especially on the slide you don't want to overdo it yeah, there's a lot of people that just overdo it all right when that is done you want to go ahead and get your barrel, and you're going to drop your barrel right back in, okay? Same thing. I usually put a drop on the barrel. It's a little right on the frame. The other side already has a drop. Put a little drop. And that's from here. It. From here, go and grab your spring. You should have your barrel back in. You're going to put your spring back on, okay? So... The spring sits in, go pull back a little. There's a little catch. It's going to sit right in that seat right there. See it? And now you're almost there. Now from here, you grab your weapon. Make sure this is still up. You're going to seat it on the rails. Okay? Go push it back. And then you're going to bring it all the way. And you're going to lock the slide to the, I lock the slide to the rear. With the slide lock right here. It's still not together. Okay. Go ahead and drop that. Now your weapon's together. Okay. So ride the slide forward. Don't let it just go. And you see it back together. Okay. Your weapon's reassembled. What I do is 
run it a couple times, let that lube get in there. And now usually on all my weapons at this point, I'll spray the outside down everywhere. Grab that brush, work it in everywhere. It gets everything. I got a lot of gook up in these uh, this stippling here. Some people like it. I'm not a big fan. I would rather put tape on it or something like that. Problem with it because I work with this weapon on my hip. Sometimes the sip the stippling will it work as sandpaper and they'll start wearing my hip down. It'll start really getting it all red and so it's kind of tough. I always got to make sure sitting in the holster and it's not depends what I'm doing, but it has done in the past that it just really irritates the hell out of my hip. The stippling. Yeah, there's actual dirt in the grooves here. So hit all that down, get it all out. Put it back on your hip and you're good for yeah, six months, every six months, at least pull it out of a holster and uh, hit it with the air gun, okay? Blow off all those dust bunnies. Make sure the weapon's not rusting in there. Make sure. <laughs> I've heard stories from old timers that, you know, back in the old days when cops didn't have to pull their gun out constantly, people actually listened to them. Um, their guns would be sitting in the holster for 20 years straight. They never even t took them out. And when they retired, they go to take them out. And there's like, you know, if they're glued in the leather holsters or, you know, they're, they're, it's just m mold growing in there. And I've heard a lot of stories like that. All right, it should take you at least about, I would say, anywhere between eight to 10 minutes to clean a gun. I mean, if it's just normal holster wear, you haven't fired it, probably about five minutes. Break it down, uh, blow it off, um, spray it, wipe it, reassemble it, lube it, put it back, eight minutes, five, eight minutes. Um, if you fired it, it should probably take you about 10 to 15 minutes or even longer if you let the uh, solution soak on the carbon and stuff like that but maintain your weapons okay because you would hate to pull your weapon out and it doesn't fire because you got it all gunked up and you shot thousands of rounds through it and you never have cleaned it because you don't know how so hopefully this video helped you if so give it a thumbs up as you can see the weapon is clean and this is the rusty side as you can see it is clean um, you could definitely tell where it's going to rust again. So if I wanted to, I could go get this uh, Cerakoted and it should never do that again. But it probably cost me a hundred bucks or more. So right now, I'll just keep cleaning it. All right. So I hope this helped you all out. If so, give me a thumbs up. Go ahead, hit that subscribe button. Hit the bell for notifications. And I'll see you on the next one.